So that brings us to chapter 54, which, fun fact, this is the chapter that Jesus quotes to the Nephite and Lamanite uh, disciples at the temple in Bountiful in 3rd Nephi chapter 22, and it's right after quoting this chapter that in chapter 23 verse 1 Jesus then gives the command, yea, a commandment I give unto you, you search these things diligently, for greater are the words of Isaiah, and he, he assures us that all of his words are going to be fulfilled. You know, this chapter opens with a message that I think should mean a lot to Latter-day Saints who are the stewards of the covenant. It begins by talking about two women, one that's married but barren, and then a, someone who's desolate. That's mm -hmm. at least the way I understand it, and it's a helpful way. And you're going to tell this barren woman to start singing, which normally you don't sing in celebration if you're barren, but the reason why is because she is going to have children through this desolate wife. In fact, more children than the married wife. In fact, so many in verse 2 that you're going to have to make your tent bigger. There's not going to be room to hold them all. They're going to start breaking out at the seams on the right and on the left hand. And so who are all these children that are brought forth by this desolate woman that will be recognized as part of the covenant family? In verse 3, your seed shall inherit the Gentiles, and they'll make the desolate cities to be inhabited. This idea again that there are these latter-day Gentiles who are going to be recognized as part of the covenant family and are going to bless you abundantly. That same idea in chapter 11 and chapter 49 and chapter 52, here it is again. And as Latter-day Saints, we identify ourselves as a fulfillment of this prophecy, as those Gentiles who we have come to understand are really part of the covenant family with this responsibility to gather and bless Israel. Now that brings us into verse 4. Notice he says, fear not. There's a concept that comes up occasionally in the scriptures, doesn't it? Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame. Speaking back to these two women that Terry was talking about before, he said, stop being afraid. You don't need to be ashamed anymore. Forget the shame of thy youth. Re re uh, don't remember the reproach of thy wid widowhood anymore. Why? Because all of these relationships that, that maybe have let you down, maybe these, these failed promises, that, that you are holding on to from the world's perspective, look at verse 5, here's the solution, for thy maker is thine husband. The Lord of hosts is his name, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth shall he be called. I love what verses 7 and 8 tell us about him as our God too. These are so tender. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. In little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer, for this is as the waters of Noah unto me." And that's God's way of saying, I promise, I will keep this promise. As an example of that he will accomplish all of this, he, he assures us in verse 10, 7, or 10, excuse me, <laughs> that the mountains will depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed. Um, and to let us assure us that he has the power, he's the creator who can do all these things. Behold, I created the smith that blows the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work, and I have created the waster to destroy. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Every tongue that arises against thee in judgment shall, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Of course, this was quoted to the prophet Joseph Smith, too, and uh, I think he took great comfort in knowing that.